This is the uh, new isoview microscope, uh, the light sheet microscope for isotropic multi-view imaging, which was designed and built by Raghav and myself. And uh, as the name suggests, what we can do in this microscope is look at a fairly large sample volume from four complementary views at the same time. These views oriented at right angles to each other with these four identical subsystems. And now for the first time, we really have the system that uh, allows us to do live imaging of a fairly large, not particularly transparent sample, as is the case really in most specimens in biology, uh, with both high temporal resolution but also high spatial resolution at the same time. ISOView is a very sample-centric design, so this is the center of our stage. And this is where I would slip in a sample in a cylinder, and the sample sits inside, flanked by these four objectives. So as you can see, these objectives are doing their sectioning by moving in and out across the sample simultaneously. We have these photons at the center of the stage coming in from all four directions, but we also have the degree of freedom to offset where they're coming from. So you can take this analogy of a four-way stop sign where you have stop signs in all four directions and traffic flowing in sequential turns. But you really don't need to do that if you have an overhead bridge where orthogonal traffics can flow at the same time. So this is the same thing we do here. So we have photons coming in here, instead of intersecting with those photons, we send in photons slightly offset in the spatial direction, and now we do the scan. And this way, there's no crosstalk between any of the views. And one other ingredient we need for that are the cameras. So the cameras also need to be looking at their respective light sheets. These cameras have a mode that allow us to do that um, in the confocal line scanning mode. Let's go ahead and trace one of the illumination paths here. We have a laser beam coming in and passing through the illumination filter and a shutter. As you can see, this is a Gaussian beam that is now um, going into the XY Galvo scanner. What this element does is it generates the light sheet. As you can see here, it scans the beam up and down. And once it's done with the up and down scan, it does the lateral scan. It's doing up and down really rapidly. So for our eye, it almost looks like a line. And it's doing the sideway lateral scan. Then at that point, we have a dichroic mirror in the beam path. It's a beam splitter, so it takes the illumination beam, directs it towards the objective, and now through the objective, we finally get to the sample. And once that light hits the sample, it excites fluorescence in the sample, and that fluorescence is collected by the cameras in the orthogonal directions. So for this laser light that's going through to the chamber onto the sample, it eliminates the sample, now the fluorescence are, is basically emitted in all directions, but those two cameras are now collecting those fluorescence light. So the light path for detection would be basically these two objectives past these dichroic mirrors, past the tube lens, past the detection filters onto the camera. Whereas illumination is past the XY Galvo scanner, um, scan lens, illumination tube lens, dichroic mirror objective onto the chamber. This basic setup is repeated four times in four different arms. And that basically allows us to generate light sheet um, from four different angles, and the cameras at four different angles allow us to collect the fluorescence um, from four different angles, giving us isotropic resolution in our images. And the fact that we don't have to wait and take turns, and we can simultaneously acquire different volumes gives us the speed that we need for these high-speed experiments. So in this way, you have a true 3D representation, and you can access your data in any which angle, and you don't have any loss of information. We can now use the ISOView microscope to image for the first time a whole nervous system activity across the entire animal, the entire Drosophila larva shown in this video. So in this case, we are looking at a, a time sequence that's, that stretches across nine hours um, uh, of, of different developmental stages, so that we can follow dynamic changes that occur in the neurons throughout the nervous system uh, while individual behaviors are being produced. So we can correlate the nervous system activity to the behavioral instances that are visible in this video sequence. In this video, we're looking at an entire developing Drosophila embryo. It's a fairly early stage Drosophila embryo at the beginning of the video, just slightly younger than three hours after egg laying. And it undergoes um, a fairly dramatic sequence of tissue rearrangements and morphogenetic processes. We're going through gastrulation and basically image the entire embryo in four second intervals for multiple hours, while at the same time capturing both the movements of the cells. You can see these green blobs, which are the nuclei of the individual cells, but also in this pink marker, 
the membranes and cell shape changes of all of the cells throughout the embryo. The unique strength of the ICU microscope also exemplified here in this, in this experiment is that we get this fairly smooth temporal coverage of this fast dynamic process while at the same time resolving in space these fairly detailed structures even at the subcellular level throughout the embryo in all spatial dimensions. This is an exciting microscope. This is our most powerful microscope in the lab now and this gives us the opportunity to um, do experiments that we were unable to do with the previous generations of microscopes in our lab. So now for the first time with this microscope we can track cells through a developing embryo in even in fairly deep regions of the specimen. We can do whole animal functional imaging in many relevant biological model systems. And so we're excited to take advantage of this capability.